Have you ever wondered how green wind energy really is? Especially when you see those vast piles of wind turbine blades dumped in landfill. Social media and articles like this one from Bloomberg have raised this question, casting doubts on the sustainability of wind power. Some people are saying it's actually horrible for the environment. Today we're going to tackle this issue head on. We'll examine why recycling wind turbine blades is such a challenge, focusing on the materials and manufacturing methods involved. Then we'll scrutinise the current recycling methods and discuss what needs to change for blades to be effectively recycled. We'll also evaluate the efforts of wind turbine manufacturers and composite material suppliers towards this goal. I'm Rosie Barnes. Welcome to Engineering with Rosie. I'm an engineer with a PhD in wind turbine blade design and years of experience working for a wind turbine blade manufacturer. So I think I am pretty well placed to answer the question of today's video, why are wind turbine blades so hard to recycle? First, let's put wind turbine waste into context. Most parts of a wind turbine are made from steel, copper and concrete and they're recyclable. However, the blades made mostly of fiberglass and sometimes carbon fiber present a unique recycling challenge. This challenge is shared with other products made of composite materials like boats, cars and aeroplanes. And in fact, wind turbine blades account for only about five to 10% of global composite material use. Very early in this YouTube channel, I made a video on wind turbine blade waste and did some rough calculations that showed that if I were to get all my household electricity from wind over 20 years, my share of composite material waste from that would be less than the composite waste from my mountain biking habit. My mountain bike is German and it has more composite materials in it than a German's share of wind turbine waste over 20 years of electricity use. So all that is to say that, yeah, the problem is overstated and it's overblown. However, blade recycling is still an issue that ought to be addressed, even if it's not the largest environmental issue we face compared to, I'll say climate change caused by burning fossil fuels. And now it is a reality that wind turbine blades going to landfill creates a really bad vibe surrounding wind energy and the general public does want this solved. So what would it take to stop blades going to landfill and why aren't we already doing it? Understanding the structural design of wind turbine blades is key to grasping why they pose a recycling challenge. You can picture a wind turbine blade as a giant cantilever beam, much like a diving board. It's fixed at one end and free at the other. A 30 meter long blade, which is small by today's standards, has to be able to withstand extreme gusts of wind that exert nearly 200,000 newtons of force. That's equivalent to the weight of about four African elephants. These blades must be incredibly stiff to avoid bending into the tower and extremely strong to resist breaking. And at the same time, they need to be light enough for the tower and bearings to support them. The key to being able to achieve this remarkable combination of stiffness, strength, and lightweight lies in fiber reinforced materials like fiberglass and carbon fiber. These materials contain fibers that are very strong because they are too thin to contain any defects, but they are floppy like a rope. Then the fibers are contained in a resin, which is not particularly strong or stiff on its own, but the resin keeps all the fibers in place. Once you put the fibers in resin and the resin cures, fibers can't slide past each other anymore. And so the composite material becomes very stiff and strong in the direction of the fibers. The composite structure allows for a high degree of optimization, concentrating the stiffness and strength where it's needed most while keeping overall mass down. When manufacturing wind turbine blades, the orientation of fibers is crucial. Most fibers align along the blade's length, ensuring strength and stiffness where it's needed, and they need to be continuous. So wind turbine blades are made in a single piece, layering dry glass fabric in a mold, then infusing it with resin under a vacuum. Once that resin cures, you're left with a very durable structure. These blades need to withstand exposure to the elements for 20 or 30 years. The fact they can do that is a great engineering feat, but their incredible durability also makes them hard to recycle. As we move on to recycling, you need to keep in mind that the features making these blades robust also make them tough to break down and recycle. Photos of wind turbine blades in landfill look terrible, and the idea of recycling gives off a very nice vibe. But let's dive a little bit beneath appearances and vibes. What does recycling actually mean? It's not as straightforward as you might think. Is burning material for energy recovery considered recycling? What about shredding the blades to use them as filler for low value materials where structural integrity isn't crucial? Does that count as recycling? Recycling options like these raise questions about sustainability and environmental impact. For instance, burning blades releases CO2, recycling plastics often uses more energy than producing from virgin materials, and using shredded materials as filler wastes those amazing structural properties that we just discussed. The ideal recycling scenario would involve recovering glass and carbon fibers and usable resin to create similar or new products, 
and it would save energy, CO2 emissions and money along the way. But that is incredibly hard and it's not what the majority of today's blade recycling projects that you hear about are even attempting to do. Let's talk in a bit more depth about fibre reinforced composite materials to find out why. Remember that fiberglass or carbon fibre are a combination of two elements, the fibre and the resin bonded tightly together. The key to recycling composites is separating those two components without destroying them. The resin is a type of plastic and on a molecular level it's composed of long polymers that slide past each other when in liquid form and they solidify upon curing. You might be thinking that recycling plastics is a straightforward process, so we do it all the time, right? PET bottles are recycled into new bottles or into new products such as trendy workout gear or durable outdoor furniture. Yet this method can't be used for wind turbine blades due to the distinct nature of the resin involved. The resin used in these blades is a thermoset, which unlike thermoplastics undergoes a permanent chemical change upon curing. The change is similar to cooking an egg. Once the egg is fried or hard boiled, it cannot revert to its raw state. The polymers in thermosets form a complex cross-link network when they're cured, and those links can't be easily broken down again. That makes them impossible to melt down and reshape like thermoplastics, which behave more like cooked spaghetti. Thermoplastic polymers don't cross-link, they just tangle, and they're easily untangled and reshaped when they're heated. This distinction between thermosets and thermoplastics is a key factor in the difficulty of recycling wind turbine blades. Just jumping in here to let you know that I'm going to be at Everything Electric Australia in Sydney this February 9th, 10th and 11th, which will be a great opportunity to meet up in person. It's a fantastic event for anyone interested in the future of transport and home electrification. I'll be hosting four sessions on Friday, February 9th on EV myth busting, discussing what's next in the energy and transport transition, exploring the best opportunities to decarbonize business and exploring the next wave of new battery chemistries. And you'll also be able to find me on Saturday, walking around, checking out the latest electric cars and listening to some of the other amazing speakers. You can use my exclusive discount code EE Rosie to get 20% off your tickets. The organizers actually pass on all of those ticket sales from this code to me. So by using this code, you're not only getting a great deal, but you're also directly supporting Engineering with Rosie, which I thank you for. So are you ready to join us at Everything Electric Australia? Grab your tickets now using the link in the description and remember to use my discount code to support the channel. I can't wait to see you there. Let's move on now to the different methods we can use to recycle wind turbine plates. The first and simplest method is to creatively repurpose turbine blades for new uses. Given their size and durability, blades can be cut up and used for applications like bike shelters and playground structures or whatever. Every time someone makes something like this, it always gets widely shared. People go nuts for this stuff. But there are over a million wind turbine blades in the world today. Do we realistically want a million wind turbine blade shaped bridges? I mean, I love wind energy way more than the average person, but I don't want every bike shelter and playground in the world to look like a hunk of wind turbine blade. I don't really think that's a scalable solution, so let's move on to more versatile recycling methods. Shredding is a key method in recycling wind turbine blades. It involves breaking down the blades into smaller, more manageable fragments, which can be used in applications where the demanding structural integrity of the original blade isn't required. For example, the shredded material can be incorporated into products like decking materials, vehicle dashboards or even for 3D printing. You can also use shredded wind turbine blade materials in cement production. This process serves a dual purpose. The organic content of the blades is recovered as energy, while the mineral fraction becomes integrated into the cement clinker. One ton of blade waste can cut CO2 emissions by 110 kilos and save 461 kilos of raw materials compared to the standard cement manufacturing process. Pyrolysis is an advanced recycling method for wind turbine blades that involves heating the material between 400 and 700 degrees Celsius in a low oxygen environment. This process chemically decomposes the resin into simpler substances and allows for the recovery of fibers, which can then be reused in structural applications. But the fiber strength is reduced by as much as 50% after being heated, so you can't easily make new wind turbine blades out of the recovered fibers as they're no longer strong enough. Other downsides to pyrolysis include high energy use and CO2 emissions, and you don't recover the resin. While the methods mentioned so far offer valuable ways to reuse composite materials, they generally lead to a lot of degradation, limiting the materials use in structurally demanding applications like new blades. So now let's move on to more advanced recycling methods, where the goal is to be able to reuse the fiber and or resin in structurally demanding uses. There's a two-pronged approach to this occurring in industry now. One, designing new blades that are easier to recycle, and 
two, coming up with ways we can reuse fibre and resin from existing blades to the extent that you could make new blades from those recovered materials. Remember earlier we talked about how easy thermoplastics are to recycle versus thermosets? If we could make wind turbine blades using thermoplastic resins, the task of recycling would be so much easier. Thermoplastic resins can be melted away from fibres and then recombined into new blades while preserving their structural properties. This approach won't help recover materials from existing blades but could make future blades fully recyclable. The challenge is that thermoplastic resins usually have much lower structural properties than thermosets, but there has been progress recently in a few projects working on new types of thermoplastic resins and new structural design and manufacturing methods to create fully recyclable thermoplastic blades. Recently, LM Wind Power, who I used to work for, has manufactured their second ever recyclable blade using Arkema's Ilium recyclable thermoplastic resin. The blade is 77 meters long, so similar to most onshore wind turbine blades, and it's shear web, that's the structural component inside the blade that holds the two shells apart, they made that using recycled resin. This blade has already completed static testing where the blade is exposed to extreme loads and it will undergo fatigue testing over the next few months. In the second prong of blade recycling efforts are new recycling methods for existing blades. There's a lot of progress here too in higher tech versions of all the standard recycling processes that we covered earlier. There is advanced mechanical recycling. One example of this is Regen Fiber, who are able to convert decommissioned blades into reusable materials for the concrete, mortar and other industries. And they can also break blades down into little pencil-like pieces that function like a mini rebar in applications like road construction. There is also advanced pyrolysis, such as the multi-stage process that Ryan Ginder from the University of Tennessee discussed with me in one of the very early videos on this channel. By carefully controlling the temperature of the pyrolysis process, the structural properties of the recovered fiber can be maintained much closer to the virgin material. The recycled glass fiber can be made into non-woven fabrics, continuous textile yarns, automotive sheet molding components, and plastic injection molding pellets. Besides pyrolysis, there are other forms of chemical recycling being applied to wind turbine blades. Solvolysis involves dissolving polymers in a solvent where controlled temperature and pressure conditions facilitates the breakdown of the polymer matrix, allowing for the separation and recovery of fibers and resins. Wind turbine manufacturer Vestas is working on commercialization of a solvolysis recycling process as part of a collaboration called Circular Economy for Thermoset Epoxy Composites, or CTEC, together with two Danish universities and epoxy resin supplier Olin. They produced a lab scale proof of concept in early 2022, but have been quiet since then, so I'm not totally sure how their scale up is going. In terms of technology maturity, it's way behind the mechanical and pyrolysis processes that we discussed earlier. However, if it's successful, it will be a way to recycle epoxy resin, which the other methods aren't. That would be halfway to the holy grail of wind turbine blade recycling the ability to recover both resin and fibre for reuse in new blades. And the other half may have actually already been achieved. While I was researching for this video, there was an announcement by Decom Blades. They have produced recovered fibres that can be used to make new blades. They use pyrolysis to separate out the glass material from old blades and then grind that into a powder which can be melted to produce new fibres. And they actually did this at 3B's glass fibre manufacturing plant in Norway last September. They say they can replace up to 5% of virgin glass. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a lot, does it? However, because these days there are a lot more new blades being made than old blades being decommissioned, substituting one to 5% of raw materials in new blades is actually enough to make use of all the current number of decommissioned blades. It'll be decades before the number of retiring blades catches up with the number of new blades being produced. And by then, other methods will hopefully have progressed to the point where most of that can be covered by recycling. That is a nice uplifting way to finish this video, isn't it? Perhaps uncharacteristically optimistic for me? Sorry, but I'm not gonna end like that. I have made it most of the way to the end of this video without addressing the biggest problem of all with wind turbine blade recycling. And that is why do we even wanna recycle wind turbine blades? Did you notice how complicated all these processes are? And the closer we get to the holy grail of recycling old wind turbine blades into new wind turbine blades, the more complicated it gets. The more processes are needed and the more transport between facilities. How much energy do you think that uses? Well, it turns out it's a lot. This question was addressed in a 2018 study by Lou et al, which found that the energy needed to process one kilogram of wind turbine blade waste was 0.26 megajoules to put blades in landfill. That's a little under 0.1 kilowatt hours and around 20 megajoules for the various chemical processes. That's nearly 100 times more energy for advanced recycling compared to simply landfilling. 
Incineration with energy recovery generates rather than consumes energy. However, it releases CO2 in the process. So only really a good outcome if it's replacing a fossil fuel energy source such as in a cement kiln, or if it includes carbon capture, which so far it does not. Let me just add in, lest this get taken out of context, even the most energy intensive recycling processes are only using about as much energy as the blades would have produced in a few days during their operational life. So we are not anywhere near the level where you could say that recycling blades uses more energy than the turbine ever generated. Not that that is gonna stop anyone from trying to claim that. But if you want to minimize energy use and emissions from a decommissioned wind turbine blade, don't transport it anywhere, don't process it, and definitely don't take carbon atoms that are currently bound up in the resin and liberate them to form CO2 in the atmosphere by burning them without carbon capture. But end of life energy use and emissions aren't the only concern, the full life cycle matters. This was the topic of another recent study by Diaz, Canumero and Mendoza. If you consider the whole life of the wind turbine blade, then using recycled materials in new blades will offset some of the energy and emissions needed to produce virgin materials. The more that can be recovered and the better its quality, the less virgin materials are needed. This study found that solvolysis, even though it has the second highest emissions from end of life processing, it emerged as the most effective in terms of circularity and full life cycle CO2 emissions, significantly outperforming other methods such as pyrolysis and landfilling, and with potential to improve further if the process can be developed to improve material quality of the recycled material and if efficiencies can be maintained as the process is scaled from where it is now and basically in the lab up to commercial scale. So yes, I do think the situation is looking pretty positive overall. The only down and left is the issue of cost, which no one likes to talk about, and it's really hard to estimate for something like Savolysis anyway that still needs to be scaled a long way. Will we be happy to pay more for recycled or recyclable wind turbine blades? Cynically, I would say probably not unless regulations force it, which they may soon. I think the biggest driver for the wind turbine manufacturers is those images of blades going into landfill have really captured the attention of the general public. It's just not a good look. And I have discovered that it's not really a winning tactic to try to explain that landfilling blades is actually a decent environmental outcome if you look at the issue logically. So I'm looking forward to watching progress on the issue of blade recycling over coming years. I think we'll see this problem solved. The videos on this channel are all brought to you with the support of One, the amazing Engineering with Rosie Patreon team, a group of awesome people who appreciate in-depth analysis of real engineering issues and recognize that these kinds of videos don't have the same mass appeal that leads to a popular and profitable YouTube channel. You can join us at this link if you would like to. And second, they're supported by Partalote, which is an energy transition technology consulting company that I founded to help investors, developers, inventors with all things related to how how clean energy technologies are developed. If you're an investor or a developer considering a new energy technology, then you can count on us to help make sure you know what you're getting into engineering wise. And if you're a product developer, we can help you with your development process to make sure that you do the right tests at the right time to commercialize your technology with minimum risk of spending a lot of money to develop a dud. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.